Problem eight. All right. Problem eight it says a rainstorm increased the amount of water stored in State J's reservoirs from 124 billion gallons of water to 138 billion. If the storm increased the amount of water in the reservoirs to 82 percent of total capacity, approximately how many billion gallons of water were the reservoirs short of total capacity prior to the storm? All right, so they're telling us that 82 percent is the same as 138 billion. Uh, these types of questions are interesting because they give you solid numbers here. They also give you percentages, and you have to find out what the relationship is. In some more difficult problems, um, you're going to have to do a little bit of extra work to find out what the relationship is. But in this case, they've actually just told us that 138 billion is 82% of capacity. And we need to basically figure out what is the total capacity and, uh, and subtract 124 billion from it. Because what they're asking for is how many billion short before the storm. This here is before the storm. So they're asking how much, how short. Got it? All right, let's start. The first thing we want to do is figure out what the total capacity is. And we know that 82% is, is it's 82% over the whole, right? So whatever maximum capacity is, it's going to be 100%. So 82 over 100 is the same as 138 billion over whatever, however many billion is the total capacity. We'll use x because we'll actually want to solve for it. What you want to do is cross multiply. You know, 38 zero zero. Uh, this is a good time to, to point to something in this in this question. Now, in the question itself, it says approximately how many billion gallons of water. Whenever you see the GMAT use approximately, it means that uh, it's not going to divide evenly. It means that we're probably going to get some decimal, we're going to get some fraction, and we have to just kind of round the numbers and, and deal with it and, and find the closest approximate value in the answer choices. So I'll be surprised if, if your number ends up being just slightly different from the answer choice. You know, as long as it's close enough, you can pick that and get it right. Um, in this case, let's actually do the calculation. Get 82, 138. And what you end up getting is 56. Bring down the zero. I think that goes into it six times. Zero, and then uh, 868, I think the closest is yeah, eight. So approximately 168, approximately, is the total. Now we take this number here, and we subtract it with the original amount, which was 124 billion. Yeah, remember? 124 billion, that's what we're subtracting here. 168 minus 124 will get us our answer. 168, 124, 4, 4, and the answer choices, you know, it might give you 43, it might give you 44, it might give you 45. You never really know what the answer choices are going to give you. Uh, you just have to find the one that is the closest to the answer. In this case, the answer choice, there actually is an answer choice for 44, and that is E. Boom. All right. Question 9. Question 9 has a graph. Let me draw it real quickly. Ah, terrible, terrible. Let me do it again. As you can see, I'm not an expert at straight lines. Alright, we'll have to deal with that. 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, and as you know, oops, that's the x. This is y. y, negative y is here. Negative x. Okay. Saying on the graph, oh no, not done yet. There's something here, and looks like there's something here, and then there's a. Oh, looks like that. 
yeah, whatever. Okay, saying on the graph above, when x equals a half, y equals 2. So when y equals 2, x equals a half. Yeah, that's about right. And it's saying that when x equals 1, so when x here equals 1, y equals 1. So there you go. The graph is symmetrical with respect to the vertical line at x equals 2. So if we imagine there's a vertical line here, yeah, use a different color. If you imagine that there's a, there's a vertical line here, it's saying that whatever's on the left of this line with respect to this, this parabola here uh, is the same as whatever's on the right. It's as if it's a mirror and that it, you're seeing the, the mirror image. Okay. I think that is uh, pretty straightforward. Okay, back to the problem. They're saying according to the graph, when x equals y, or sorry, when x equals 3, y equals what? So when x equals 3, where's this line? Where's y? Well, we know that it is a mirror image, so we know that whatever's on the left will mirror what's on the right. And the distance between 2 and 3 is the same as the distance between 1 and 2. What that means is whatever is y for 1 should also be y for 3. And in this case, uh, when x equals 1, y equals 1. When, e when x equals 3, y should also equal 1. And that answer is E. All right. Question 10 says when 1 tenth percent of 5,000 is subtracted from 1 tenth of 5,000, what's the difference? Okay, so let me rewrite this. So what it's saying is 1 tenth times 5,000 minus 1 tenth percent, which is 1 tenth times 1 over 100, of 5,000 equals what? As long as you can, you can translate those words into a equation, I think you're, you're going to be set. So in this case here, let's see, let's take out the 0 and get 500 minus 10 times 100 is 1,000 times 5,000 is 500 minus 5,000 divided by 1,000 is 5. That's pretty easy. 500 minus 5 equals 495. And that is D. All right. I think that is all the time we have. All right. Stay tuned for the next video.